Hey, I'm Adam Foss. I'm doing a campfire storytelling event as a part of the BHA virtual extravaganza for the winter. Tuning in from Canada and wanted to say what's up to all my Canadian friends and family that might be tuning in from all the provinces and territories up here. I've been told I'm the only Canadian storyteller for this event. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in from south of the border, from the lower 48 or anywhere in the world. And I'm going to get into this story. This story, of course, takes place on public land or crown land here in Canada. And this story starts where most good stories start, around a campfire. And around that campfire is my brother Cam and me. And it's day 16 of a backpack archery stone sheep hunt last summer. And this is no ordinary stone sheep hunt. This is the hunt that will finish my brother's 20-year quest for taking all four species of wild sheep in North America. And what is a sheep, you might ask? Well, a sheep is not only a beautiful animal because of their coloration and their sweeping horns, but because of where they live. And this is a stone sheep. You might recognize it. It's sort of a cousin of the other three species of sheep, bighorn sheep, desert sheep, doll sheep. You might have seen bighorn sheep before. But it's not only about the sheep. It's about where they live. And this is typical sheep country. The, the terrain is steep and they're often found at the top. Of course, at the start of our story, we were not on the top. This is very much in the bottom and we're in the tent trying to muster up the courage to have a big climb up the mountain. Sheep hunting takes a lot of glassing. It's a very visual game and we saw quite a few sheep throughout the 16 days that we were out thus far. I think Cam didn't want to end this hunt. He sort of joked that there was too many good hunting days left to go after that ram or that ram. And as the days began to go by, I was a little nervous because we were sort of, sort of running out of time, but Cam wasn't nervous. He was having a great time. It was a hunt of a lifetime regardless of what happened on that final day. And like I said, I was a little nervous I wanted this bad for him, but he wasn't, and at least he didn't show it. So we started off in the bottom. We were glassing up the mountain, and like I said, we had seen sheep in different groups, and now it was time to kind of put all our stuff in our backpack, and it was going to be a day or a day and a half hike to get up to the base of where these sheep were, and we were going to go after them. We didn't know if they were legal, which means for a sheep to have the minimum requirement for harvest in British Columbia, it has to be eight years old. And how you can discern that is you can actually count the rings on the horn. So these are age rings. So the ram has to be eight years old or the length of the horn has to curl over the nose. So by counting them, you can figure out if they're old enough. So we didn't know if any of these rams were of age and old enough but we had to go after them. We had to get close. We were running out of time. And so up we went. And as we kind of ascended out of the willows that were soaking wet and getting up to the start of the Alpine, this photo for me kind of sums up Cam and his mindset about most things in life, including sheep hunting. He's not afraid to put the sweat in with anything that he does, whether it's his career, sports, hunting, fishing, anything that he does is sort of 110%. And he's been a pretty remarkable example in my life for what it means to work for something. And so up we went. And as we were climbing up, it was almost as if this, this 20 years of hunting together, these adventures that we had had, were, were playing all out in my mind with every step as we were climbing out of the willows and into the rocks. I was seeing all these past sheep hunts that we had done together growing up. I was thinking about the time that we had our friend's mom, who was a nurse, bandage up our heels because we'd blistered them so badly. And she told us we needed to take it easy. We crammed them in our boots and went off on another trip. I was thinking about the time that Cam had a small altercation and got all four of his front teeth knocked out. They were delicately put back in and we were sheep hunting uh, two days later for the opener of sheep hunting. Uh, sheep season, that 
particular hunt he was eating watered down mountain house eggs and yogurt tubes, but it wasn't going to stop him. All the different, they were misadventures is what they were, but I was seeing them play through my mind and I was kind of realizing that this, this trip was more than just a hunt. Um, but I was quickly shaken of this reflection of, of these times that we'd had and back placed in the moment. And this is very typical of me. I'm about a hundred yards behind camp. He's charging downhill to go down this mountain and up another one. And he, people that know Cam, like I do, he has one gear and it's a very fast gear and you could call it a sense of urgency, but, um, I would say it's something a little bit more than that. And as we charge downhill, um, something happened. This is the look that Cam spun around and gave me. He, it was a hurry up. We got to get after these sheep. We got places to be. We have hours left on this hunt. He quickly saw me frantically pointing at the nine rams that were in this tiny little swale that you could only see from the side that we were on. And he was up in front of me just charging away. And quickly he hit the deck, pulled out the spotting scope. He's looking at the sheep. I'm looking at the sheep. We're figuring out that two of the rams are actually old enough. The stock was on. Cam came back. He slid it up through the rocks. He's stepping on each rock, and as it's wobbling, he's waiting 30 seconds for it to stop wobbling and continuing. Eventually, he closes the distance, makes a perfect shot on the oldest ram, and this 20-year quest was over. But we embraced, and we were honestly in, in shock. And um, But I was also realizing that it was not about this accomplishment. It wasn't about killing a sheep. It wasn't about even finishing this, this quest that he was on, I was finding out that these types of wilderness experiences were bonding for us and many people in my life, but especially us. And as life gets busier and we were growing up from kids to men and having careers and getting married, This, this idea of sheep hunting was at the foundation of, of who we were. And we are brothers. And that would never change. And I don't know if it would be the same if we didn't have something like hunting and fishing and camping and being out in these wild places because they are, they're just such a relationship accelerator. Those times that you spend are so special and you become so bonded. And to be honest, I mean, it wouldn't be possible without big wild places to, to do this stuff and get away from the distractions. So I'm pretty thankful. I'm pretty thankful for that. And Sheep and wild places go hand in hand and you can't really have one without the other. So if you're taking anything away from this story, it would be keep, keep having those experiences, keep going to wild places, keep protecting wild places and wild animals and, and do things on any scale. It doesn't have to be a 17 day sheep hunt, but keep doing things in wild places with the people that you love.